to estimate using this ruler the width and the length of this man's penis who she alleges raped her. The case of Shannon Ruth versus Nicholas Carter. I see Mr. Boscovich and Ms. Wakayama. Let's take appearances starting first with the plaintiff. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Mark Boscovich on behalf of the plaintiff. Good morning, Your Honor. Jamie Wakayama. And you Good morning, Your Honor. Leah. Hang on, you guys. On behalf of the defendant. Uh, you're breaking up. After Mr. Boscovich, I'm getting a lot of feedback. I need a better record. So is there Mr. Boscovich, anyone with you? You have to take your appearance. <coughs> Jamie McAnally for the plaintiff. Leanne Christian, Mo Christian Morris for the plaintiff as well. Thank you. Your Honor, Leanne Wakayama appearing on behalf of the defendant, uh, counter plaintiff, and on Zoom is also my partner, Dale Hayes. And Michael Holtz is also in the room with me as co-counsel. He's admitted pro hoc. And then my client, Mr. Carter, is here. All right. Are there any other appearances? No, Your Honor. All right. Starting first uh, with the plaintiff and then the defendant, can you outline what issues you have and, and how you want to take them up? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you. I actually re requested this call. This is Leanne Wakayama because we are in the middle of day two of Shannon Ruth's deposition and we've run into some issues that we would like Your Honor's guidance on. The first issue is that yesterday we were here for six hours and we were very accommodating with Ms. Ruth's um, you know, request for breaks and in total we were here six hours, so double the time of actually what we were on the record. And, and during that time, uh, Ms. Ruth answered my questions with 69 I don't remembers and 116 I don't knows. And so, of course, I'm following up with those questions because I don't want any surprises at the time of trial. I explained to her that I need her best testimony today because this is, her one, this is my one shot to depose her before trial. And so it's taking up a lot of extra time in relation to my questioning and what's really frustrating your honor is that i'm asking her specific questions about her own text messages and her own interrogatory responses that were served less than a month ago on november 17 2023 when i asked her to go into detail about specifics of what she is saying happened to her with mr carter she is unable to give me details and she says i don't know or i don't remember and so now today when i'm following up with so is it your testimony that you are unable to provide me, for example, an estimate of the time that you were in the bathroom with Mr. Carter, her counsel, Mr. Boscovich, is now instructing her not to answer my questions. And so, you know, there isn't any grounds of privilege or anything else, and he's simply saying that she's being harassed, which, Your Honor, I'm not. I'm trying to make sure that I am able to have a fair examination of this witness with the time allotted, and the time allotted for two days, we're already at four hours, and I'm not even a third way through my outline. Um, we have case laws, Your Honor is aware, that there it warrants additional time to extend the seven hours in, the, in a situation like this, where I am being get, given evasive answers or non-responsive answers, and then counsel's telling the witness not to even answer some of my questions as well. On top of that, there's a lot of time being taken up between me and Mr. Boscovich because he's either coaching the witness verbally or he is physically coaching her, which we have on camera, by holding her bicep and squeezing at certain points or, you know, turning his chair to her and saying, it's okay, answer if you can, give me your best answer, you can answer again. And all of these I've asked him many, many times not to do because it's impeding my fair examination of the witness. On top of that, we tried to work this out, Your Honor, where um, I anticipated that this is a very emotional subject for everybody involved. And so I had emailed Mr. Boscovich before this deposition and saying, listen, if it takes your client a long time to answer my questions, I really want to work something out where that time is not going against my seven hours. I 
continually asked him yesterday and today, are we able to go beyond the seven hours? And he has not agreed to that. We have been very accommodating judge. So that's one thing we would like today is we would like at least another two hours so we can get through this. And if you need more, then we'll go ahead and petition the court. The last issue that we have judge is that Miss Ruth for the past, you know, 35 minutes is not looking into the camera. When I'm asking her to explain specific details about her own interrogatory answers of what happened in the bathroom with Nick Carter, she looks down, she holds her head down. And so I, this is all on video. I'm not even able to, you know, see her face and she won't even look at me during this examination. So I would ask that we have at least two more hours on the record. I would ask that you instruct counsel to only make objections to form and privilege. And I would also ask that you, um, you know, prohibit any type of coaching, whether it's physical or verbal, and that Ms. Ruth does her best to look into the camera and give us, you know, eye contact when, when she's answering these questions. Thank you, Judge. All right, Mr. Boscovitz and team. Yes, Your Honor, we, uh, we requested this call as well. Um, this deposition has been, from the very beginning, there's been a lot of harassment of my client when Ms. Wakayama is literally yelling questions at her, why she doesn't remember, there's constant arguing with my client. The questions just keep getting repeated, 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 and I've been very patient I've tried not to raise my voice with Ms. Wakayama. I've been trying to be very patient with this process, but it's becoming an unsafe, harassing environment for my client. Um, I've had to comfort her by putting my arm on, on, her, on her arm because she's literally being put a ruler in front of her and asking her to measure, uh, to estimate using this ruler, the, the width and the length of this man's penis who she alleges raped her. And so she's literally hyperventilating during the deposition. It's all on the video. And the fact that I'm trying to comfort her in that time is not coaching. I'm trying to be there for her. And um, I just don't know how we can proceed. I've been very patient through this process, but it is, it's not stopping. So I, I don't think we should proceed without someone present to watch this. And I would love the opportunity to show some of this video to your honor as to what has been going on in, in this room. Your honor, I, that is completely untrue. Yeah. The only time there that we have- There will be no interruptions. Please, Ms. Wakiyama. Mr. Boscovich, Sorry, are you your honor. finished? Um, yeah, your honor, I, the other, just, if we keep going this route, we're not gonna actually have a clean record that can be used at trial because there's, you know, one of the things that has been happening is when my client is getting upset, uh, there's been questions basically saying, you're harassing, Ms. Wakayama is accusing my client of harassing her client. And, and she has done nothing of the such during this deposition, but she keeps accusing her of harassing Mr. Carter. And, and, and it's just upsetting her. And I'm trying, I want her to be able to answer these questions accurately, but when you keep getting yelled at and accused of things, she doesn't feel safe anymore proceeding here. So we're doing our best and we appreciate your time, Your Honor. All right, Ms. Wakiyama, in response, please. Thank you, Your Honor, I apologize. I thought he was finished earlier. Um, there has been absolutely no unprofessionalism or me raising my voice at Ms. Ruth or accusing her of harassing anybody. All of that argument comes when counsel interrupts my, my examination and we are going back and forth between counsel as to you know the coaching the issues that i raised earlier when i asked miss ruth a question i simply ask her a question the fact that you know mr boscovich is instructing her not to answer it then develops into an argument among counsel where we are going back and forth where he's calling my client a perpetrator where i'm saying you know he's being harassed i'm not harassing her i just want her to answer my question and so, you know, unless you want anything else from me, Your Honor, that is completely untrue. And we've done everything to conduct ourselves in a very professional manner so I can get a fair examination of this witness and be prepared for the time of trial. And I just want to make sure we have enough time and that, um, you know, counsel's not being obstreperous in my examination. Good enough. Mr. Boscovich, you may respond. 
Yes, Your Honor. Um, I, I respectfully disagree with Ms. Wakayama's description of the record. I do not believe we can proceed forward without someone present here. Um, and I'm sorry that we've had to get you involved in this. We've done our best, Your Honor, and uh, appreciate your time. Good enough. All right, let me give you some preliminary thoughts. You know, witnesses don't always remember, and sometimes they don't know the answers, and sometimes the quality of memory fades over time. If then the memory is then revived at the time of trial, then that's something that will go to credibility at a later date. So I'm not going to give any direction on how the witness should testify. However, the plaintiff's counsel may not instruct their client not to answer unless there is an issue of form or privilege. If the plaintiff is found to be coaching the witness in any way, I will take appropriate action which will include sanctions. The plaintiff's counsel may not touch the plaintiff, may not give her legal advice on the record, may not move his chair next to hers. In the event that she needs a break, you can, as long as there's no question pending, you will get a break, plaintiff, at any time that you request one for the amount of time that the plaintiff needs. I thought I made it really clear on Monday that she is to be accommodated with regard to this deposition. With regard to the plaintiff not looking in the camera, I wouldn't instruct a witness to look at the jury during their testimony. So she can look or act or do whatever she thinks is appropriate or look wherever she wants. Plaintiff's counsel will not comfort the witness on the record during the deposition. Again, if you need to do that, take a break. Finally, there will be no name calling by either side. In the event that occurs after this conference has been held, I will sanction the parties appropriately based upon an order shortening time. Lastly, the request to go past the time allotted for the deposition today is denied without prejudice to be determined at a later date. Again, if there's an issue, I'll sign an order shortening time. We can take it up at the end of the week or early next week telephonically or in the uh, court, in courtroom. Uh, there will be no harassment, no raising of voices by either side. You know, if you, with regard to repeating questions, you know, it's not, uh, it's not necessarily prohibited, but when it comes to the point of harassment or badgering, that is what's prohibited. So in the event that I find that either party is harassing a witness throughout the entirety of the time I sit on this case, I will act, act appropriately and determine that that is inappropriate conduct. Does that give both sides sufficient ground rules to proceed today? Yes, Your Honor. Thank you very much. Your Honor, I, I'm, I'm very concerned of proceeding forward. I appreciate your guidance, Your Honor. Um, I'm just very concerned that uh, this is not going to, we'd like a, an opportunity, if we can, to move for a protective order so we can have someone actually supervising the deposition, Your Honor. Well, that request is denied without prejudice as of today. In the event that you bring it up and show me a, a transcript or a video that I can review, because I can't take the words of the lawyers. I have to make that determination for myself based upon the conduct of the parties. So the request is denied without prejudice. If you seek further relief, Mr. Boskovich, we can take it up at the beginning of next week. Again, make sure that both sides accommodate the witness with regard to any breaks she may need. You may not take a break while a question is pending, but there should be great latitude given to the witness to be able to give her best testimony. We will continue to do so, Your Honor. Thank you. All right, anything else, Mr. Boskovich? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right, guys. And again, I'm, I'm available all of next week and we'll accommodate your schedule. Thank you, Your Honor, we appreciate your time. All right, thanks everybody. All right, let's let's go back to our